Ladies and gentlemen, let's Red Gamer Telecom video. We're going to be exploring the difference between the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One's GPU. So, while many people do understand the key differences between the two graphics processing units, there is some confusion still among some of you, it would seem, because I'm still getting messages asking for further details on this, and um, I figured now would be a good time just to kind of finish off the discussion on this once and for all, for the most part. I have got a very lengthy series of videos which is featured on the channel's front page, but it's really long viewing. Now, what I've done is also done this as an article, which I'd recommend you check out because I'm going to be going through this pretty quickly, as it turns out, in this video. I do go through a lot more detail in the article along with links, but for the sake of brevity and just to get everyone onto the same page, I want to make this video fairly short, but if you do want more information, you can go ahead and check out the link in the video's description for yet more shiny information. So definitely, it's fair to say that the PlayStation 4's perceived graphical superiority is having a negative impact on the Xbox One's sales figures. I think that's pretty fair to say at this point. The connectless SKU for the Xbox One has definitely improved things, but even so, the fact that the PS4's GPU in particular is one area where it's very difficult for the Xbox One to make up the gap with certainly has, in mo no doubt, hurt the sales figures, which I think is a little bit ironic, as we'll go through in this very video. So, the Xbox One and PS4 basic specifications, um, and we are going very basic here. So, they're both using the GCN architecture. There are some differences we'll go through in just a moment. Um, this means that they are fully programmable shaders, as you would expect. Um, the major difference is that 1152 shaders are being housed in the PlayStation 4's compute units. That's 64 stream processors per compute unit. So in the case of the PS4, you've got 18. On the Xbox One, you've got 12. Technically, there are actually 20 on the PS4 and there are actually 14 on the Xbox One, but both have two disabled. These are basically for redundancy and for the purpose of yields. The PS4 does feature double the amount of ROPs. It has 32 versus 16. Now, the purpose of the ROPs are basically to put together the scene. It's basically rast uh, raster operators. Um, I've not gone super detailed on this, but suffice to say, they're basically, you're going to notice more um, improved performance if you're going for like high levels of anti-aliasing, texture filtering, that type of thing. Additional ROPs can be quite invaluable. More details in the article. The Xbox One also features more texture mapping units, um, which is 48 versus 72 of the PS4. So just in case you're unaware, you can actually calculate the difference on the texture fill rate by simply timesing either the 72 or the 48 by the respective clock speeds, 800 for the PS4, 853 for the Xbox One. Um, of course, this also means you can do very similar for the PS4 or Xbox One's um, ALU performance. Um, you basically times the clock speed versus the shader count versus, and then you times that by two. So in the case of the PS4, that gives you 1.840 flops. In the case of the Xbox One, 1.32. Important to remember, these are peak best case scenarios. So computers becoming extremely um, important for next generation games and graphics and consoles. There are multiple reasons behind that. Um, it's a pretty lengthy set of reasons, actually. But you could think of the CPU as a general purpose uh, processor. And it's able to basically process a massive wide variety of different uh, commands and applications and programs. And it does this with a very intelligent um, decision-making process. The GPU doesn't really have that, as it turns out. The GPU instead basically is more stupid, but it's very fast. So because of that, and the fact that the PS4 and the Xbox One use AMD's Jaguar, um, which isn't bad per se, it's 8 cores uh, running at 1.75 for the Xbox One, sod knows for the PS4 because Sony are not saying. It's most likely it's running at 1.6, but some benchmarks and developers are saying that for whatever reason, the PS4s actually perform a bit better. But it's hard to know because no one's really giving that much information. 
Regardless, you're looking at eight CPU cores that's split over two modules, four cores each module, X each being x86-64. Regardless, the low power, not that great performance compared to a desktop. That's um, according to games developers, as well as benchmarks. I mean, for example, anyway, um, they are basically Kabini processors at the end of the day, so you can search for that if you want more information. So this means that the PS4 slash Xbox One are utilizing GP GPU compute. Um, I've already overcover I've already covered quite a lot of this. Um, but GP GPU compute, the PS4 does have a slight advantage. There's a couple of reasons. One is the raw higher flop count for the PS4. Um, simply put, it can process more stuff at once faster. The second would be the volatile bit, which is basically a little change that was um, implemented by Sony on the level 2 cache. Suffice to say, it basically adds a little tag to um, compute data. And so because it's tagged in the cache, it can basically selectively change or alter that line as required. Uh, rather than having to do a complete cache flush, the PS4's GPU, at least according to the knowledge that we have, doesn't feature anything regarding this. Now we've also got the PS4's additional ACES, asynchronous compute units. It's got eight rather than two. So this basically means the PS4 can store more compute commands. Now, in theory, this means that the PS4 does have an advantage in compute-heavy scenarios. It basically means that the PS4 can have a better control mechanism to actually uh, calculate when and where to calculate compute commands versus the graphical commands and this, this control structure is very important the ps4's api is actually pretty robust but i believe the xbox ones is as well it's using like directx 11.2 which is already pretty robust and the xbox one does have some dx12 features already in place you can check the article for more information on that if you so need it Moving on to the memory bandwidth of both systems as well, the ES RAM. So both systems are using 256-bit bus. The difference here is 68 gigabytes for DDR3, 176 gigabytes for the PS4's GDDR5. There are a couple of caveats, however. Firstly, technically the memory bandwidth is less of a big deal because you're also dealing with less GPU performance. So because there's less GPU performance, it stands to reason that the Xbox One's memory bandwidth is less important. In other words, it doesn't need quite so much to be able to feed the beast. You've also got the ES RAM. The ES RAM is very flexible. It can be used for a plethora of different things. The only problem is it's fairly limited. It's not that large. It's fast, and Microsoft themselves say that it can be used for a number of different tasks. It's very fast. It's about 102 gigabytes a second. It can be faster depending on the operation. This is according to Microsoft. And developers are starting to get to use, uh, get to grips with it. And this is known as Microsoft's, uh, what was it, stages of ESRAM implementation. The only problem is that it's still, at the end of the day, an extra level of difficulty that the PlayStation 4 doesn't really have to deal with. So, there's that. Now, the PS4 and the Xbox One, the amount of memory that's available for both of them in terms of the physical amount of space is down to a little bit of debate, the PS4 has 4.5 gigabytes, 4.5 gigabytes available, 512 megabytes additional RAM is known as flexible memory, and apparently we've got another 512 megabytes as kind of like a virtual memory. The Xbox One is not known. Now the reason I mentioned the 4.5 is because this is from Sucker Punch, I've actually got images of that um, and their discussions all in the articles, so you can check that out if you need more information on that. Now we're down to the APIs. So the API is DX12 or currently 11.2 versus, well, the PlayStations, which is either GNMX or GNM. So GNMX and GNM um, are very similar. Excuse me, guys, just had to clear my throat there. Um, are very similar in some ways to the layout of the place of the Xbox One. The Xbox One works with a basic DX11.2 uh, set, and then basically, if developers want to kind of code lower level, so to the metal, as we're becoming such a popular phrase now, there are extensions which allow them to do that, and that allows them to basically directly control the GPU as required. On the other hand, the PS4 
um, uses either GNMX or GNM. GNMX is basically a simplified version. It has a higher level of abstraction, meaning that a lot of the um, complicated stuff is basically hidden from view. GNM is basically the low level. Um, of course, the Xbox One's SDK has recently come out, the June version, which does increase the amount of performance available to the Developers, it basically freed up 10% of the reserve. It's important to remember this is not additional performance. It was just what was already there. It's just that the 1.32 was not all available to developers before. As I said, about 10% was being cordoned off for the purpose of uh, Connect. Despite the fact that initial reports and some sites are still citing that the Xbox One's API and SDKs are a mess, they've improved significantly since the system's launch significantly um, and this is according to developers not me and because of that it's definitely starting to improve things for development on the xbox one also as a slight aside moving on to dx12 for just a microsecond here dx12 it's unknown how much of a performance increase it's going to have some people are basically saying it's going to have zero others are saying it's going to have a slight increase personally speaking i think it's going to have kind of a a nice increase for the xbox one it does have problems in it it's already fairly low level and the cpu has less room for optimization because of that but definitely there are going to be some additional features included and it just doesn't make sense for there to be no improvement in performance in addition to that it's worth remembering that it will make basically switching between the xbox one uh, or porting between the ps4 uh, sorry the pc and the xbox one or vice versa pretty easy so finally the verdict so yes the ps4's gpu is more powerful it has higher level of alu um, basically high level of peak performance it has more memory bandwidth available to it it does of course have more ROPs, a better compute performance and so on and so on but that's not where the story ends there are some points for us to remember despite the fact that the ps4 can push pixels faster and more of them uh, simply because of the extra performance some developers like Bungie are already starting to push towards the parity card, if you will. And if you look at titles like, say, Watch Dogs um, from Ubisoft, of course, to be honest, the graphics and the frame rate are very much interchangeable between both versions. There are some differences on the PS4, some slightly nicer shadows, for example, but overall, it's not a massive difference. Sniper Elite, on the other hand, there are a lot more duplicates slash torn frames on the Xbox One and the frame rate does definitely feel a little bit nicer. There are also lower levels of anstropic filtering on the Xbox One which is definitely a direct result of say the lower levels of ROPs as well as the GPU performance as a whole. But a lot of this could be accounted very simply 1080p versus 900p is pretty much 1.44 times the difference. So it's pretty much a case of that's all the GPU of the PS4, or the GPU advantage of the PS4 gone right there. That extra little bit of resolution. And honestly, yes, some people are going to cite, you know, it makes a massive difference to others. You can argue blind what one, you know, it, it does 900p versus 8, uh, 1080p make a massive difference. To me, yes, I can notice it. To others, maybe not so much. But the bottom line is, don't buy a console for the GPU performance. Instead, buy it for platform exclusives. Because if you're going with just what looks better on a multi-platform, most of the time it's only going to be maybe slight improvements on the frame rate. Or, in some cases, of course, you're going to have situations where the resolution looks better. My point being, yes, the PlayStation 4 games do look better. Objectively, they have a higher frame rate, generally it's slightly more stable, they have a slightly higher resolution and so on. Necessarily speaking, it's not always that the PS4 has a lo longer or shorter loading time, however. Interestingly enough, for my testing anyway on Sniper Elite, I noticed the PS4 actually loads a little bit fast, uh, slower on the game, which is not the same as Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs on the Xbox One loaded a little bit slower on the Xbox One compared to the PS4. So I guess that's just how they coded the games or horses for courses. Regardless, you shouldn't buy a console purely on GPU performance. What you should do 
is buy it for the exclusives and the platform as a whole. If you're buying a game, a system purely for the graphics, PC just makes more sense. For $700, and I've linked this in the article, you can build yourself a PC which absolutely destroys next generation consoles. It's that simple. GTX 770 could be included for less than, well, for $700. And that's assuming you need everything. And we're talking even down to the optical drive here. You can get a system that can be running like 1440p. My point being, yes, the PS4 does have graphical advantages. Yes, the Xbox One is slower. But it's not to the point where games are unplayable in the Xbox One. And there are some really good games coming out on both platforms. So, in other words, if you're watching this for educational purposes or just because you want to know something, there you have it. On the other hand, if you're looking at this as a, I want to buy a system and I don't know which one, I am trying to figure out which is more powerful. I would urge you, yes, the PS4 is more powerful, but... Try and have a play about with both systems. Do you like the Xbox One controller more? Do you like the live infrastructure less or more? Do you like the, the way they handle free games? I think the PS4 gives a slightly better deal when it comes to, say, PS Plus, personally speaking. Um, all these little factors play into things, and you're definitely going to have to make a decision based on that. So don't just, you know, focus on a few more pixels. Focus on the whole infrastructure as a whole. The most important thing, no matter which platform you go with, enjoy the games. Because those be the most important part of things, in my personal opinion, anyway. And I think both platforms, at this point, have a quite nice lineup, particularly when we go into the Christmas period. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, found it somewhat entertaining or interesting or whatever. I'll see you soon. Take care. I wonder if you can give this a share or a like or the general bits and bobs. I would much appreciate it. Take care and bye for now.